Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Europa Universalis 4 as we are playing with the Emperor expansion as Milan. Uh, so I like to start uh, looking at the, the large map here of Europe so we can see exactly what's happened in the first, you know, eight years or so of the game. Uh, you'll notice that the Ottomans are in fact losing right now. Uh, now they did conquer uh, Constantinople, so they have that under their control right now. Uh, another little province there they take in, but for the most part we're seeing that uh, Byz Byzantium has a province there and Albania is currently occupying all of their territory. Uh, so I don't know how many of these are forts, so this might not be that big of a deal. Uh, but overall they are definitely losing. Remember there is a crusade uh, against the Ottomans right now. Uh, so we might have a very different um, situation than normal if the Ottomans end up uh, you know, not uh, becoming the power they typically do. Uh, over here you see we got war throughout the Low Countries and, and uh, Burgundy. And then, of course, the English are dealing with the uh, War of the Roses. Uh, so before we get started here, uh, I'd like to just have a little, little quick discussion on, on history when it comes to the leaders of Milan. Uh, again, I'm not going to get too crazy with it in this this series as I've you know, done in past ones. Uh, we won't get too crazy with it, but I did just want to discuss it. I actually talked about this in the last episode, but I cut it out. Uh, because it was, uh, you know, it was just the intro it was way too long as it was. Uh, so uh, our current ruler is Filippo Visconti. Uh, he would at this point already be dead. Uh, I think he died in the late 1940s. Uh, so he would already be dead, uh, but he is still around now. We've got him at age 60 here. Uh, he did die uh, without an heir. Uh, as you guys saw when we started the campaign, we didn't have an heir until we got the Katarina event. Now, Filippo was not a good person. He was a terrible person, in fact. Uh, he was just a mean, uh, cruel dude who uh, was quite insecure. And just some of the things he did uh, you know, definitely indicate the fact that he was he was not a great person. However, this is one of the cases where you have a person who may not be uh, a good character, he may not be uh, have good character, uh, but ended up being like a, a decent uh, leader. Uh, he wasn't great, but he was a decent leader. And, and one of the reasons why he was a decent leader was because he had the ability to delegate, to delegate to people who were better than him in, in their respective areas. And one of the persons that he, one of the people that he delegated to was of course Francesco Sforza. Uh, so many of you guys have probably heard of him. He's probably the most famous uh, leader of Milan. I would think, I would say he's probably the most famous uh, Duke of, of Milan. And he was uh, one of the military commanders uh, of Filippo's, during Filippo's reign. Uh, had several successes, uh, victories. He did have a few defeats as well, but overall, uh, more victories than defeats, and that's what's important. Uh, did help expand Milan's territory. Uh, quite a bit, especially under uh, once he became the Duke, uh, because again, Filippo died without an heir. Uh, so then you had a short period uh, where a republic was established. It was called the Ambrosian Republic, uh, named after St. Ambrose, which is the patron saint of Milan. And that period did not go very well, not at all. Uh, so during that period, there was, there was famine, uh, the plague returned back to the city, which again, that's not the fault of the Republic, uh, but the, the plague returned back uh, to the city, just widespread famine and looting and just a, a, a period of instability uh, that eventually resulted in the elites of, of Milan uh, very much clamoring for uh, a new strong leader to kind of you know, take the reins again and, and reestablish stability in, in the city. And of course, that was Francesco Forza, who became uh, the new duke. Now again, militarily, uh, he was pretty decent as a commander. Uh, while During his reign, he would eventually extend uh, Milanese influence over Genoa. Uh, so he placed his own puppet as the doge of Genoa. And so basically they controlled the city. Uh, he also was very good friends with the leaders in Florence here. Uh, you know, there's been some shows about that. I'm sure you guys have seen them. Well, I don't know that you've seen those shows because they're not very good uh, from my understanding. I haven't watched them. Uh, but yeah, he was uh, good friends with the leaders in uh, Florence. And so diplomatically, uh, he established a, um, you know, uh, several key alliances that helped kind of uh, ensure stability in the Italian region. Now, of course, there was always uh, wars between the Italian powers, but it was more stable, more peaceful than it typically was prior to his reign and after his reign. 
Uh, and again, that was really because I, I feel like his, his own force of personality and his own abilities. Uh, in addition to his diplomatic and military successes, uh, he was also quite a good administrator. Uh, so he reformed the administration. When he left, uh, when he died, <laughs> he uh, had full coffers. His uh, administration, I guess you wouldn't really call it administration. This is, you know, a, a ducal government. Uh, but, you know, the coffers were full. Uh, when he died. Uh, so he, he did very well when it comes to the economy. The economy was booming during his time. Uh, he reigned during the 1450s and, and part of the 1460s. And uh, during that time, uh, Milan had a booming economy. Uh, in addition to the, you know, uh, economic success. Uh, they are also uh, cultural successes. Uh, so this is, of course, during the Italian Renaissance. Uh, so many cities were, uh, you know, host to that. Uh, you know, Florence being one of the key ones. Uh, but Milan was as well one of the probably less heard of ones that you see in the movies and the shows and stuff. Uh, but it was actually one of the key cities of the Renaissance, and Sforza uh, played a large role in that. He was definitely a patron in the arts. He invested a lot of that money that he made from his reforms uh, into uh, patronizing uh, artists. So a pretty good leader. Uh, the reason why I've had to study him so much is because I did my research paper, uh, my final research paper for getting my, my degree. And it was actually for my history degree, but I did a, a little combination uh, paper where I combined you know, I was getting a, a political science degree and a, a history degree. I did one shortly after the other and uh, kind of combined uh, my knowledge from those two areas to do a, uh, it was very uh, detailed uh, research paper. It was one of the longer ones you got to write when you're, when you're graduating. I don't, I don't remember how many pages it was, but it was very, very long research paper uh, on balance of power politics. Uh, so, you know, again, combining kind of my, my uh, focus on history and, you know, my, my degree in, in political science. Uh, into kind of one paper. And uh, the uh, balance of power, power politics are typically more associated with starting in the late 17th century, you know, with, uh, you know, Louis XIV and what uh, England was doing at the time to try and uh, uh, create alliances, coalitions to, you know, essentially uh, stand against Louis' attempts to uh, expand his territory. Uh, and so most people associate balance of power politics as starting then. However, I found in my research, and this is what I argued in my paper, uh, the balance of, of power politics actually started in Italy. Uh, and uh, this was the key period during the Italian wars and prior to that. And Sforza is, in fact, one of the first proponents of balance of power politics. Uh, so I did a whole paper on that. Um, you yeah, know, I'm not going to go into to details on it. But again, that's that's one reason why I know a lot about them. That's all we'll go into. You know, not too much detail. We'll go really light here. I could talk about this for hours, especially if we wanted to go into like balance of power politics and the Italian wars. And uh, this is a, definitely a topic I'm very much interested in, uh, but we won't. Uh, let's play the game. Uh, so I don't think there's anything we needed to do before we start, uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, but let's just let it play. I know we're currently attempting to get... Uh, the spy network built up so that we can declare war on Genoa. Uh, we do have the Family Ties event. Did they turn that event thing back on? Oops, that's not what I want to do. I hit escape. Uh, I just want to make sure they didn't uh, turn on. They did. I don't know why they keep turning this on uh, every time I leave the game and come back in. I don't want the pause on events. Uh, and, and the main reason for that is because I always naturally press pause when an event fires up, just I've been playing Paradox games for so long. Uh, so then I end up unpausing it when the event comes up because it pauses. And then in addition, when you have that turned on and then you you know click on the, the option, then it starts playing again, which I don't always want that to happen. Uh, so I try and have that turn off. I don't know why it's not staying off, though. Uh, so family ties. This is uh, the royal family in Savoy will learn of the pleasantries exchanged. We'll gain 10 diplomatic power and Savoy's opinion will increase with us. That's very, very good. Uh, I actually really would like to increase our opinion of them. Uh, I hope that they'll... Yeah, I, I, I don't know if they will. Uh, but I really hope that they'll remove us as rivals. Uh, it, it happens occasionally. Uh, but, you know, typically, uh, typically they, they will stay as your rival. But I really hope they remove us. Because uh, I want to be friends with them, uh, if we can. Uh, maybe we can get... Uh, we'd have to go to war with them to do that. Uh, foreign Quarter of Milano. For a long time, foreign merchants have been settling in Milano to better conduct trade with our country. Lately, however, with the intensi intensified activity of the Kingdom of Aragon, the quarter has grown into a city of its own. This is not without its problems. Our own citizens are complaining that the Aragonese community is growing at their expense. They demand that we impose harsher rules on the foreign merchants and curtail their activities outside of the foreign quarter. I don't know why I decided to read that one, but we did. Uh, so our options here are no, we should encourage the foreign community to grow instead. 
uh, that'll increase opinion with Aragon, and uh, we'll get the Thriving Merchant community, uh, and that's a pretty damn good modifier. Uh, or we can do, uh, we must respect the wish of the good men of Milano, and that would decrease our opinion, and local traders will be strengthened, which will increase our trade power uh, significantly. Well, I don't know how we feel about Aragon. I guess that's really what this is uh, based on. Now, they are allied with Savoy uh, and Venice, uh, so I really don't see how we're not going to have trouble with them. Yeah, uh, so what we'll do is we'll just we'll just go with the trade power. Uh, I don't know which one would actually generate more money because you get some good... Uh, the, the local development cost isn't really going to help us that much because uh, we're not really developing right now. Uh, but the local goods... Uh, produce modifier would be nice, but yeah, I just don't think it'll be as good as this one as far as like money earned uh, We are in the positive just barely and our innovativeness is decreasing because we have fallen behind in technology a bit And that's largely because our ruler sucks. Our ruler is not great We've also spent our political power in, on a few few things uh, which is also probably impact our ability to get some of those techs uh, But overall it's just because our leader is not great. In fact speaking of getting techs I did say that I was going to change up our national focus once we got the military tech which we have done uh, So since we have a, a leader uh, getting us a little bit of military power there So we'll still be sitting at six. We're gonna go with the national focus uh, here on administrative uh, so still pretty good in the military power and it's really just impacting diplomatic power Which I don't really care about the diplomatic techs as much uh, we really want to get those it, the admin techs knocked out, so I think it would be good to focus on that. Uh, we still have our power projection sitting at uh, above 50, so that's getting us the additional power as well. It's quite helpful. Uh, so we're about uh, not quite halfway there on here. Now we're about halfway, and uh, again, we're going to declare war on, on Genoa, though I did say that we might do these guys first, didn't I? Because they're allied with Mantua. Uh, is there a reason why I decided to go in after Genoa first? Was it because of the the mission? It might have been because of that mission that I've been looking at. Because uh, we do have the mission to to subdue them. Uh, one thing to consider when it comes to attacking Genoa is that they are allied with Naples. However, we do have the Papal States to help us there, which apparently I was pronouncing that wrong. Uh, I've been pronouncing it Papal. I thought that's the way it was uh, pronounced, uh, but I had somebody tell me that it wasn't pronounced that way. Now, he didn't tell me how uh, the proper pronunciation is. He just said he didn't, he, that he was really frustrated with me pronouncing it wrong. Uh, when you do uh, get frustrated with me pronouncing something wrong, it's probably good to tell me the proper pronunciation so that I can, uh, you know, fix it. Uh, so, I, I, I didn't know. I always thought it was pronounced uh, Papal, uh, but apparently it's Papal. Uh, I guess that makes sense. That's what I'm guessing, anyway, so that's what I looked up since that guy didn't uh, provide any uh, pronunciation tips. Uh, I, I am terrible with pronunciation. I should say that early on in this series, guys. I am not great with pronunciation, uh, particularly in languages that are you know, foreign to me, non-English languages, but even in English, I've always had a, a speech problem that I've, I've struggled with, and you really can't tell, um, or most people can't tell now, uh, because I have uh, you know, improved so much, especially with YouTube. If you go back to my old, old videos, though, uh, you'll, you'll see the difference. Uh, There's something I've improved a lot on because there's nothing quite like people uh, all over the internet insulting you. Uh, you get a couple hundred people insulting you and making fun of you. It typically gets you uh, working on your, your uh, faults, I think. Uh, so if I pronounce anything wrong, just uh, correct me down in the comments, guys, uh, and I'll try my best. Uh, so... I was going to do something. Uh, we were looking at uh, the situation. Why did I decide to go after Genoa? I, I think it was just I, I wanted to go with the, uh, the missions here. Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to do. And let me just see what some of these uh, other things are here. Yeah, I think that's the way we'll go because it makes the most sense to go down that route. So yeah, we'll go after Genoa even though we have to fight. Uh, uh, that's how I got distracted. Because uh, yeah, we'd have to fight the uh, we'd have to fight Naples. Uh, this is their only ally, uh, and then um, maybe we could give the, uh, I don't really want to give the Papacy more land, honestly. Uh, but we could do that if we can't get them to join, because we probably don't have enough uh, favors with them. Yeah, we got one favor, so the only way to get them to join would be to promise them land. Uh, and let's take a look at how many favors we have with them. We do have eight favors with them, so we could probably get them to join us against Genoa. Not that we really would need the assistance, it's 3,000 men, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, and they have enacted, the Emperor has enacted the next Imperial Reform. Uh, so this is local construction cost reduced by 5% as is local development cost 
Uh, so let's just, well, I don't want to go to that. I want to go, I thought that would have took me into here. Uh, so we'll just take a look at, uh, these are the, the reforms. And something that's new here is that you can click for your support of it. Now, I don't know how that impacts things, honestly. I'm seeing if that impacts his uh, Imperial authority at all. Yeah, I'm honestly not entirely sure how the, uh, you know, whether you support it or not impacts anything. But you know what? Let's go ahead and say we support these because, yeah, I would like to have these. Uh, and I'm even willing to go with the... Yeah, I don't think we want to do... We'll do. We'll go all the way up to here. Say I support all those. I don't really know uh, what impact that has. Uh, but yeah, so while we're in the Emperor, Empire, we'll, we'll support policies that we like. Uh, but we'll probably... Uh, I assume we'll get pulled out of the Empire just because of the uh, Shadow Kingdom event uh, or the incident. Not really an event anymore. It's the uh, Imperial Incidents. Uh, just overall, they've improved the HRE so much. Uh, I really like what they've done with it. And that's one of those things that we've... And Venice has made us into a rival. Uh, that's one of those things, uh, the HRE, Catholicism, uh, that you just really need to be improved. Uh, so, they want to ally with us. We already knew that. We're going to decline that. They are not very powerful. Uh, we've already got a little one province miner as an ally. We don't need another one. All right, so we could speed this up to all the way to speed 5. It does fly on speed 5, though. I mean, it goes really fast. I'll show you guys here just how fast this goes. Uh, optimization, since the last time I played, is incredible, man. Uh, you would think with all this new content, the new provinces, the new, uh, kind of, you know, the new tags, uh, all the new mechanics, that it'd be slower. But good God, this thing just flies. Uh, so we got the Treaty of Lodi, uh, so we can say peace in our time, and this is a historical treaty as well. I've already talked about history enough, so we won't go into it, but uh, this was actually under uh, Sforla. Uh, so we can say peace in our time, and I think I was kind of already discussed this. Uh, these were his diplomatic uh, actions that he was doing, uh, where, again, he did improve relations with uh, Florence and Naples, which is uh, why you're seeing this. And then Venice as well. He actually was allied to Venice for a short time, but then he betrayed him because that's what Milan does. They betray Venice. <laughs> so we're enemies with them. So we can approve our opinion with them. Or we can say this will get in the way of our ambitions. Well, I see no reason not to improve opinion uh, with uh, Florence and, and Naples. Uh, yeah, let's do that. We'll do that. Uh, 10 military power is really nice, though. Especially, um, you know, when we have such a cruddy leader. All right, so we now have enough uh, to go ahead and, oh, wait a minute. Seems that we cannot. The cost of fabricating claims is based upon, okay, so the actual base cost is 20. Okay, so I was thinking it was 25, and then I found out it was 30. The reason why it's 30 is because we're inside the HRE, so it's a plus 50% bonus. Uh, either way, I was wrong, because I said 25, and it's actually 20. Uh, but yeah, it's not, it's not 30. Uh, so we can't do this, though. Uh, because I'm not entirely sure why we can't do this. Oh, okay, we are doing it here. Uh, I mixed it up the flags because <laughs> they have like almost the same flags. Uh, they just got a little difference here. Uh, you know, actually, uh, Milan, uh, now the Duchy of Milan, this is the correct flag, uh, but Milan also uses uh, the, the Cross of St. George. I mean, honestly, uh, a ton of the tags in uh, you four would use the Cross of St. George if you're being uh, accurate, and, and it would be incredibly confusing. Uh, but yeah, a lot of countries use the Cross of St. George. Uh, so yeah, I just didn't even see the blue right there, and I just automatically assumed it was that we were working on Genoa. We are not working on Genoa. Okay, so that that makes sense why I couldn't do it there. Uh, but we did learn something from it, uh, that it's not uh, it's not 30 normal. normally. It's only 30 uh, because we're in the HRE. Uh, so we did decide to go after these guys first. Okay, that makes sense. I'm sure some people were yelling at the screen like, Dummy, you're not going after Genoa. Uh, but we probably should have went after Genoa, though, uh, because of the uh, the mission. Uh, but we've already done this, so let's go ahead and fabricate the claim. Uh, and let's declare war on them. Uh, I don't know if they've created any new alliances. They have not. Uh, and do we want to call Mantua in? No, we do not. Uh, but this is one way to take them out without having to deal with the Papal States. Uh, excuse me, the Papal States. I'm going to make that mistake over and over again because I'm so used to calling it that. Uh, so we are ready to declare war, technically, uh, but we've got to get our, our um, army over here and get their morale back up. Oh, I did say I was going to show you how fast this goes. Look at that. It just flies. It goes so quick. Uh, so we're going to get our morale up here, and also looks like we can invest in diplomatic tech, which is going to give us that increased range, and we'll have marketplaces. Not that we have much money to, to build them. Uh, but that would allow us, if we wanted to, 
or maybe I, I don't know actually no let's let's take a look if we'll have it or not uh, see if we have the I think we do uh, so we could see if we get more money right now we're transferring 0.25 um, I'm just curious just because this one's uh, currently worth more if transferring trade power would generate more right now We're transferring 0.33. Uh, so let's just try it out because I'm curious That's gonna be 23 days and we'll see if this changes at all So again 0.33 is what it's sitting at while over here. We were at 0.25 So it needs to be in order to be worth it uh, We need to be at least 58 more than 58 technically to be worth it That's what it needs to go up to we'll see we'll see how that goes. It's gonna be about a month uh, which gives us time to get this morale back up before we declare war. Not that we really need to. I mean, it's 2,000 and 3,000 men. Uh, I don't know how long it takes to go here, uh, but we'll wait. Uh, I, I like trying to take as few casualties as possible. Uh, so is this long enough? Can we see? Uh, it looks like it has taken place, and it is not worth it. Uh, it is increased by 0.7, uh, so definitely not worth it, guys. All right, well, I thought it was worth uh, testing. Though... Wait a minute, because we're already transferring trade power from 0.25, so we're actually transferring 0.6. I didn't think about that, the fact that we would already be doing a little bit of transferring. So in fact, this one is better. Okay, not by much. It's uh, It will have no effect on our actual money. Uh, but in the long run, it might. You know, you know, as the, you know, every province, you know, they become worth more money as the game goes. Uh, and we are now ready to do this. So... Uh, Diplomatic power is not great, and inflation is terrible. Uh, so I think we're just going to use the caution. Sometimes I'll go with this, uh, but one thing to consider here is when you're, uh, uh, whenever you're taking any decision, you always need to consider the uh, the power cost. Uh, so in this case, when it comes to burning off uh, inflation, it does come require admin power. Uh, so eventually you're going to have to burn that off uh, with the admin power, and so you're getting diplo power, which again to me is the least useful of the three. Uh, so we're just going to use caution in this case. Uh, and plus we have money troubles, so that's another thing to consider when, when it comes to taking inflation. Uh, so let's go and declare war. Let's make this happen, man. And do we want... We do not want to bring anybody else in. We do have to fight Venice. When the hell did that happen? Are they guaranteeing them? Or something? What's, what's going on here? Why do we have to fight Venice? They're in the same trade league. Okay. Uh, so that's that's the reason why. All right, uh, so that's gonna be a problem, I think. Yeah, if we gotta fight them, I don't really wanna fight them. Uh, I didn't really consider that, uh, but I suppose we could. Let me see if I can't get these guys in, and yeah, we'd have to fight them all alone. Okay, so that would not work out. Well, we have the uh, war goal here for quite a long time. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and now flip over to Genoa and do what we were gonna do here because uh, I don't think we're quite ready. Uh, if we could get the uh, Papal States in, involved, uh, then I think it would be fine. Uh, but as of right now, uh, and again, I think even if we attacked uh, Genoa, we'd have to fight Naples alone. Uh, but I think we could take Naples. Uh, let's just take a look uh, and see how much men they have. Yeah, I feel like we could probably take Naples, because we'll get rid of Genoa's army uh, early on here, and they'd march up this way. But by that point, we might already have taken the territory. So we could do that, uh, and I think that's what we'll do. And we'll, we'll still have the war goal here uh, for when situation changes, uh, when we can at least get the Papal States involved to, to help us out. Because remember, Venice is more powerful than us. So that's the reason why we're not fighting them yet. Uh, we might be able to win, but it'd take long, longer than, than is necessary. Uh, so just taking a look here and declaring war on them and seeing who would, who would support them. It does look like they would have support... Uh, from you know several other tags here, but again, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. So I know they have a larger force here than us uh, Once they combine them all, uh, but yeah, I don't think it's gonna be an issue guys. I think we'll be fine uh, Let me just make sure it's not anybody close by. Yeah, you know what guys? I think we're gonna go. Uh, we'll do that. Uh, so let's just flip the spy over Let's we'll go ahead and cancel this here uh, Yeah, cancel that and then we're gonna go ahead and send we could do both at the same time technically, but I don't see any reason to all right, so we'll instead build this spy network here. It feels like we're still here, is that, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I just uh, pulled them out and then put them back. That was great, absolutely great. Again, I think the flags are messing me up here because they're so damn close. Build spy network, there we go. So that took way longer than it should have. Incompetence. 
and confidence runs rampant here. Uh, so uh, we are, it's gonna take us some time. Uh, we need to be drilling though. Uh, so there's always that that we can do. And you know what, let's just go and move from wherever we're gonna attack him, which I'm just gonna see where the best location to attack from would be Parma. Uh, so let's go ahead and go there and then we'll start the drilling and continue getting our uh, army drill up uh, while we wait to get this. Uh, so kind of unfortunate that that happened, but again, we do have that claim for some time. Uh, we have it until 1479, so I don't see why we wouldn't be able to take advantage of it as the situations change. Uh, we just kind of got to always adjust our strategy based on uh, what's going on, but it would have been nice to to have already known that Venice was gonna support them. Uh, Cause I do not wanna fight Venice just yet. Though, you know what? This might be the perfect time to fight Venice because they're distracted. Hmm. You know what guys? I didn't really think about that fact. Uh, that they're currently distracted. Now we don't wanna clear war on them cause then we got Aragon coming. Uh, so that wouldn't be, be good. Uh, but if they're at war right now, which doesn't look like they are. Okay, they already have peace. Never mind. I, I saw that they didn't have any military here. Uh, so I was like, damn, where's the uh, Venetian army? Uh, and I figured they were down here fighting the Ottomans, and I think that's what they were doing, uh, but they are done, so they would be able to come back here and, and fight us. Uh, so we got the last jousting tournament. does happen in Europe uh, around this time, or every every country. And I almost always go over this. I mean, it, it, it's for 20 years. It's tradition, prestige, and, and morale of army, so we'll probably go for it. It's a little cost and, and uh, admin power, not too bad. Uh, the money yeah, is not very much. Uh, the Splendor, uh, if you guys don't know what that is, that's with the ages. Uh, so uh, the Splendor we have right now is 128. We're not earning much because we haven't satisfied these objectives here. As you satisfy these, you get more Splendor, which then allows you to uh, select different options here. And these ones that are grayed out are ones for specific countries. Uh, I don't think there's any for Milan uh, because I mean, we're not uh, a large country. Uh, so uh, we won't have any special ones. And if we did, it would have been in the age of discovery. So yeah, there's none available here. Uh, again, it's, like, it's typically only for like major powers. Uh, so yeah, you'll notice Venice has one, uh, but we do not have, uh, we're not getting much because we're not, you know, it's, it's just, it's just relevant. I'm not too worried about Splendor. So let's say forward to glory. Let's get all that stuff. Uh, again, the bonuses there are great though. We would like to get them in eventually. Uh, and we're looking at a uh, current rebel uprising here. Uh, so what we're going to want to do, uh, let's figure out where they're going to rebel from and then move our troops over there. So they're going to rebel from right over here. Uh, one interesting new mechanic, uh, and these guys might rebel before we even get our morale up. That would be bad. Uh, but one interesting mechanic, let's see, 0.7 years, so they should rebel pretty soon, is that uh, you can now force rebellions. Uh, so you can see that here, provoke revolt. Now this does revol result in the rebellion being stronger than it normally would be. So it's not uh, an option without consequence, but once you get to 50%, you can do that. And it's actually really nice. I like that. Uh, Cause then it kind of force it, it allows you to, you know, force it. And I hate having to sit around while it's sitting at 80% and waiting for, you know, that, that finally to fire and increase or whatever. Uh, so we can finally get our first uh, government reform here. And so there's also, you know, there's a new button here for expanding the administration. Uh, to get more governing capacity, and that's one thing you can use reform progress for. Uh, so we are currently a feudal nobility here. Uh, you can also change over to the autocracy if you wanted to. We're, we're not going to though. Um, you know, I think that it has a little bit better bonus though, because uh, you know we're not getting any income from vassals, and why would you want noble influence? Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go down the next tier. Uh, this is noble privileges. We can either get. Uh, go with the strength and noble privileges and get national manpower modifier plus 15% or curtail noble privileges and uh, reduce their influence and get the national tax modifier increase, which would be good as well. So while I think the manpower would be a little bit more useful uh, than the, the money, I want to decrease no, the noble influence because it is kind of higher in our country. So we're going to get that. And I think we'll probably prefer the clergy and the uh, burgers in this playthrough. Uh, that's what I would assume anyway, it makes sense. Yeah, just I wonder if I could get all this conquered before Venice came and assisted them. Again though, they do have a very large army. We should probably wait until Venice is at war with somebody uh, before we, uh, like if they go to war with the Ottomans again after the peace treaty's up, uh, I think that'd probably be better. And I'm almost considering provoking this damn rebellion because we're just sitting here uh, and Again, this is one of the nice features that we have. We don't have to just sit here. I'm sure it's going to fire soon, though. You would think. Looks like we're going to have to deal with two damn rebellions. Ugh. All right. 
Rebel problems, guys. Rebel problems. Uh, and we're not going to be able to go to war with Genoa anyway uh, because of uh, that little setback. Well, that's fine. So yeah, just waiting for the, the rebellion to fire. Uh, it would only be 7,000 men, so again, it's probably better to just wait for it to fire naturally. Uh, we received word uh, that they bring... Okay, Venice says embrace the Renaissance. So hopefully it should be coming to us soon, where we'll be able to embrace it. Come on, man. I mean, it almost seems like this one's going to fire first. Yeah, I mean, it very well might fire first, just because it's continuing to increase while this one's not. Now, given we did move our troops here, so that makes it less likely to increase. Uh, so that's probably what's what's going on here. That's what I would assume. And the nobles demand recompensation. Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm not going to give them any money. So we're going to ignore them. They'll lose 10 loyalty. Damn, we get hit with the stability. That's, that's unfortunate. Well, you know, we just don't have the money. We take a loan. I'm not going to take a loan. So screw them. Uh, we'll lose a little bit of... A little bit of loyalty. Uh, we have dropped down below 50 power projection, unfortunately, so we're not getting all that anymore. And England has already ended the War of the Roses. That was quick. Uh, so let's just take a look and see who has succeeded. Uh, we have Henry the Seventh York. Uh, so every Henry the Seventh is a, a York. Okay, uh, that's that's interesting. And it's not the Henry the Seventh, of course. It's just the Seventh Henry, who is different than the historical Henry the Seventh, which is, by the way, my favorite tutor. If you didn't know, I mentioned it all the time uh, on that England series. That's who we had on the thumbnail, I believe. That's Henry the Seventh, and here we go. We got the revolt, and it should be a relatively easy revolt to deal with. And uh, we're now going to have to put down another one. Let's bring these guys on over to here and deal with this revolt too. Let's put down these rebellions, and of course, that does result in that nice modifier there. Recent uprising, negative one hundred, so. Hopefully, shouldn't have any more revolts from this area. Uh, I almost want to provoke this damn one. I mean, it's 8,000, so it in fact would be a larger army. It'd be like a 12,000 man army if I I provoked it. Yeah, we'll just let it go naturally, I suppose. And it's not like we can go to war with Genoa any damn ways, uh, because we're waiting uh, for this, as our agent was discovered. And we're just watching Venice, keeping our eyes on our rival here. Uh, so, hurtful trade policies. Uh, so we must support the burgers, which is probably what we're going to do. Or we cannot let our trade policy be decided by these peddlers. Uh, so this would result in a loss of trade efficiency, and uh, the burgers would lose loyalty and influence. But we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to get their loyalty, get their influence, and get that wonderful, wonderful trade efficiency. Increase the amount of money that we're earning. Uh, let me just make sure, yeah, let's make sure we're not paying fully for that fort. Uh, so if we were to just take a look at the estates and see what they're, they're granting us now. Okay, still 10% trade efficiency. Okay, so yeah, just waiting for this rebellion, and you see that we are now ticking up again on Genoa. Uh, let's just hope they haven't gotten new alliances. Uh, they have not. Again, this is probably going to be a tougher fight. Uh, it's going to be the toughest fight we've done so far, for sure, uh, because we are probably not going to get any support. We're just not there yet, guys. Just not there. And what is all this? Okay. Uh, so Luca has embraced it, and an alliance offered from Naples. Well, hello there. Uh, that is exactly what I was looking for, is a stronger ally, and Naples is one of the strongest powers in Italy outside of Venice. Uh, so, yeah, I, I almost want to, to go with them, but one problem is that I, I'm not sure that how they feel about, and also I'm not sure what would happen with the, uh, when we declare war in Genoa. Yeah, I'm not sure who they would side with here. Uh, what we should probably do, let me just take a look here. Yeah, it doesn't look like uh, the Papal States minds them. Let me just take a look and see who they don't like. They don't like Florence. They don't like Aragon. Okay. Uh, so, and then like Savoy either. So I'm almost wanting to ally them. Let's just do one thing before we do. Let's just double check that that's what we want to do and see if there's any other alliances that might be better. Uh, Austria is willing to ally us. France is willing to ally us. Uh, so everybody wants to be my friend now. Well, that's, uh, things have changed. We're much more popular now, aren't we? Well, we need a strong ally to complete that mission. So that's one thing to consider. Uh, another thing to think about, though, is the fact that if you, you know, ally with with uh, France or or Austria, you're gonna get dragged into war after war after war. Uh, they constantly, these larger powers are just constantly dragging you into conflicts that you might not want to get involved with. Uh, just looking at who they're all rivaled with to see what the best option is. 
We do need to have a powerful ally. We can always end the alliance uh, and we can use Austria against Venice, which is the key here. So I think we're gonna ally with Austria. I think that'd be wise. So we'll do that. Yeah, I've agreed to that. I never did bother to check who they're allied with. All right, they have a lot of allies. Uh, so I wanna see how many, uh, Trying to see my own self here. I guess I could click the button down there. Uh, so we still have five slots uh, total and we've only filled three of those. So yeah, we'll ally with Naples too. Um, I'm not planning on expanding south anytime soon. Uh, so we'll see what happens when we declare war on these guys. I would assume that uh, they'd probably support Genoa in the war still. Yeah, they'd still support them, but uh, I don't know if that would result in them breaking the alliance. I'm not entirely sure how that would work. Uh, so yeah, the Naples alliance might not last very long. Uh, we'll see. Again, we still have to get this up to, to 30, though, before we're going to be able to do anything. Uh, an offer of knowledge sharing from our ally. Uh, so this is um, something I don't think I've seen before, and I think this has to... I don't know if it, how new it is, but I, I don't recall ever seeing it. Yeah, I believe this has to do with the spreading of the institutions. Uh, so they'll give us 1% growth towards Renaissance uh, in our capital area province, and there'll be a fee of 10%, which would be 0.86, which would be a big chunk of our money. And it expires 10 years to pass and no further knowledge can be transferred or, okay. So if we get it here, then it would expire. Uh, so what we'll probably just wanna go ahead and do is just take a look and see how close we are to getting it. We're getting 0.33 per month. Uh, so it, it's gonna be a while. Now, given as it spreads to other areas, uh, we would see that uh, go a little bit faster. Just see if this is worth that money. Uh, we wanna see how far institutions have spread. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunately kind of slow. So no reason not to speed that up. Yeah, I'll accept that for a little bit of money. It's a good bonus as a compliment. Yeah, we'll accept it, and it will only go until till, uh, we get it. Yeah, it's going to hit our income kind of pretty hard, um, but that's all right. Money is there to be spent. We're still waiting for this damn uh, rebellion to happen here. Uh, again, we can always provoke it, but I just don't know that that's the best option to go with. Uh, so profiteering. Uh, so we can say uh, competition is good for everyone, and... Uh, We'd get the local goods produce modifier. Or we can do this one here. Let's just go with the uh, local protectionism. Fits for the time as well. Uh, and Switzerland was discovered performing the, they're building the spy network here. Uh, so I think we got the mission fulfilled for the Alliance. Yep, Friends in High Places has been uh, fulfilled and this grants us 10 prestige and uh, plus 20% for improving relations. So it's not great, but it does, uh, I mean, the prestige is nice, uh, but it does let us unlock the next two, which are fortify the passes. Uh, so we need to have a fort. Oh, <laughs> in that province that I deleted the fort. Interesting. <laughs> uh, but you actually do need it in three uh, provinces. Do we need it in all three of those? That's what it seems like. Okay, one of the following, and there's there's more than three. All right, I didn't see the ones over here. So there's a total of six, and we need three. Uh, we don't own any of those but one, so we won't be getting that anytime soon. Uh, the other mission that unlocked is the Republican Yearnings, uh, which we have no interest in doing. Okay, we have to wait until the disaster's done for the Ambrosian Republic, which you might not even get. I don't know what the uh, triggers, conditions for that are. Uh, and yeah, we'll accept all the royal marriages, might as well. And I don't know if any of them have disputed successions. If Austria offers us the same, then yeah, maybe we'll accept that. Uh, Savoy actually has some problems. They won't accept a marriage, of course, because of our, uh, oh, you know what? Oh. I hate how it says it's green here, but then we look at it and it's not. Uh, I was about to say, as a rival, they shouldn't be willing to, uh, uh, to do any kind of agreements like that. Should have a pretty big penalty there. Uh, but yeah, I, would, I really like to improve relations with them. Uh, again, we'll just have to see what happens there. And Genoa, our future enemy here, has also embraced the Renaissance. So we're just waiting for this damn rebel faction to, to fire. Uh, what are we looking at? 2.6 tiers, you know what? That might not fire anytime soon. Uh, so what I'm, I really don't want to have to manually fire it. I think what we're gonna do, I'd rather fight 8,000 with some penalties you see here with the river crossing penalty then to spawn 12,000 so let's select some moves so they'll hopefully spawn yeah that'll make it a little bit more likely uh, that they'll be uh, spawning and these guys are all accepting becoming free cities 
Okay, we'll have to see what happens there, because remember, we are still waiting for the, the Italians to leave uh, the uh, Holy Roman Empire. We do have the next admin tech, which is temples. I'm going to grab that. Again, we're not doing great in money, so can't really build anything just yet. Uh, having to keep the damn military, you know, paying fully for the military, and even and when we're not even training is like the worst here. Uh, just waiting for this damn rebellion. Uh, oh no, Lipo has embarrassed the embarrasses the court, so we lose stability. Shite. All right, and we can't even improve it because we just spent all of our admin power. We need a hundred. I don't like sitting at uh, under zero. I try not to stay. I try to stay at least at zero. Uh, unless I'm swimming in admin power and it's maxed out, I, I will never increase past zero. Uh, I don't see the point because you'll do it and then another event will fire that will take it from you. Uh, there's many of those stability events that take stability from you. Actually, you have a, uh, a trigger uh, condition uh, that modifies it, uh, make it more likely if you have higher stability to get those negative events. And the higher you go, when you're sitting at three stability, it's much more likely you'll get those negative events. Again, doesn't necessarily mean that you will. Uh, so this is... A uh, cool new mechanic, or new, again, new when uh, new from the last time I played, uh, where it will highlight the province that it's, uh, and also go to the province that this is about. Uh, so I like that. Tensions between the nobility and clergy. Uh, so, uh, we can say, Jesus lived among beggars and fishermen, why don't you? In which case, the papal states would be unhappy, the nobility would be more loyal, but the clergy would be less loyal. Uh, and then we could do the opposite, and we would get a noble rebellion. Uh, oh, okay, uh, that's not good. Man, that sucks. These are terrible options. Sometimes you get uh, tough choices to be made. Uh, so I don't want to fight 15. You know, when you threaten me with the sword, I'm, I'm just going to have to go with your side. <laughs> so uh, it does mean the clergy are slightly disloyal. We should be able to improve that soon, though, but that is going to have effects, as you guys can see here. Uh, national arrests, national tax modifiers, stability costs, and yearly papal influence is all bad. Uh, but we just got this here. That's awesome. This is great. So on our Duke's request, a renowned arch architect is going to build plan. He's got plans for a, a grand hospital. Okay, it's going to be the first community hospitals in Italy. And it's going to be built in a new fashionable Renaissance style. And this is just a fantastic event. Uh, you get one plus stability. You get ten legitimacy, and of course we get some base tax and, and manpower. Man, this is a fantastic event. Yeah, I'll take that. Nice. So we got some good luck there. Very good. Uh, it does look like our spy was detected again. We're never going to get up to 30. Never. Uh, as soon as we do, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, unless I, I kind of probably missed it because I wouldn't pay attention. Uh, but yeah, overall, this is... Uh, we're having some difficulty trying to get these damn wars started here. Uh, let's just take a peek at these guys, see if anything has changed here. Oh, shit. There we go, guys. That's what we needed now. Uh, the, war, the rebellion has not happened yet. Uh, it could happen any moment. Yeah, uh, but it's fine. We're not going to miss this opportunity. Uh, it does look like we will end up at war with Florence, so that's not good. Uh, Luca would support us. Let me see if um, there's anything we can do here. No, I can't give land to anybody. Uh, the problem here is, of course, that we don't have the uh, trust uh, with anybody. Or the favors, I should say. Uh, let's take a look and see how far we are from getting the Papal States. Uh, we're at six. And we're getting one per year right now. So we'd have to sit by for four years, which we are not going to do. Uh, so we'll just fight them all. Uh, let's make it happen, guys. Uh, the point is, is that Venice is not in the war, uh, and that is good. Uh, we could, of course, pull them in so they'd be cheaper to attack, but that would result in them bringing in their allies, which would be terrible. So we won't be doing that. Uh, we could just take their province in a more expensive way, uh, and I'm hoping that that's how this is going to work out. Uh, so we already have our army already. Everything is good to go, uh, and we will pull in them. We require the ten favors, uh, but it's going to be helpful because you know we've got, uh, you know, I think. I think we still outnumber them. It doesn't, I don't think it adds in. Oh no, okay, it does add in everybody who you'd bring into the war here. So uh, in total with our allies, uh, we do have a larger army. So let's bring them in and sorry about the loud slams. I think my wife just got home and just opened, closed or I should say closed the, the front door. Uh, so yeah, let's do this. Let's make it happen, man. I'm excited. I thought we weren't gonna be at a war in this episode because this is what it seemed like. Uh, so let's see how the best way to do this. We could split our forces. Uh, but we really want to force a, a conflict here, uh, and hopefully uh, Florence will will help out their ally. Uh, we'll see. Let's see. Uh, if there's anything we need to be aware of over there. So yeah, we'll attack them first, and let's just turn this down just a notch. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure we get the the battles done first. 
Uh, looks like they're going to attack there, which means that we'll be on the defense. Oh, wait a minute. Excuse me. Uh, that's Where's our ally? Oh, our ally's here. Okay, so we're going to allow our ally to, take, to do the siege because uh, he does have enough troops, so that's good. Uh, and then they're leaving. Uh, this is a hill province, so it's actually not a good place to attack. I uh, would get the river penalty as well, I believe. I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, so we don't actually want to attack them there. Uh, here is a much better place. It's uh, the farmlands, and we're not going to get a river penalty. So what we need to do, we could try and beat them there, but of course they'll just stop moving, I think. More than likely just stop moving. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go ahead and see if we can get them. We'll just have to bite them on on the uh, offensive. Uh, so we need to wait till they're locked there. There we go. All right, so we get there on 14th of March. They'll get there on the 12th of March. So it will be uh, a defense for them. Uh, but again, we don't get any penalties, so it's fine. Uh, we have larger uh, numbers. It looks like we have the shock penalty, which is the most important one to have in the early game. Fire the fire one's the one you want later. Uh, so yeah, we were able to win, and it wasn't too bad casualty-wise. And we have forced a battle. Now, we're going to have to chase these guys. I assume they're going uh, to here. Uh, so we're going to try and chase them before they get their morale back up. Maybe get them destroyed. Yes, okay. So this will be a river penalty, uh, but you know they don't have any morale, so easy uh, easy victory there, guys. All right, so they're sieging this down, so we will siege this one down. And uh, then we'll go into Florence, I guess, because we'll probably have to in order to get the, uh, the war score up. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but overall, this is uh, easy conflict that just got lucky. Got lucky that Venice decided not to uh, support them for whatever reason. I'm not entirely sure where, why. Uh, Florence is building up their forces again. Uh, Austria wants a royal marriage. We'll accept that. Uh, so yeah, they'll build up another army. Uh, they do have the, the navy as well. We have no navy. Uh, I should have built one uh, because we now have a port. Uh, but we're so broke. Uh, we just don't have any money. Uh, but yeah, it would be good to, to have like some trade ships just try and increase our income uh, overall. Uh, might actually pay for themselves. Uh, so, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll get a navy building. Uh, we're going to wait until the conflict's over, though, because you know, we won't even be able to use them uh, because we don't control the seas. All right, so uh, we have these sieges going, so, yeah, we can just go ahead and put it on fast forward. We also have uh, knocked the walls down, uh, so that does make this a little bit quicker uh, with the walls breached. And then uh, also we could, if we wanted to, assault it, uh, but we're not going to do that. Uh, manpower is too short, though. You know, with the attrition, sometimes I wonder. And if you do the math, I wonder if it wouldn't just be better to just assault, even with the high losses that you take. Uh, sometimes I think it might be the better option. Ah, but in this case, we almost got it done. And uh, we should have both of these provinces under our control. And then we're going to have to go fight Florence's army, I assume. Hopefully they don't come right back here now that they left. Uh, we have control of that. Now we're getting the ticking war score, since that is the Wurgle. And... Something popped up over here. Is it about the truce expiring? Maybe. Uh, maybe the rebel uprising. What we might want to do, because I don't want to fight these guys right now, uh, I think we're going to have to do the harsh treatment. I don't really want to use the, the military power for that, but yeah, I feel like this would not be good to have to fight these guys right now. Uh, and see how... Yeah, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's do the harsh treatment. Use a little bit of uh, military power. Also, speaking of military power, guys, Oh, the shadow event has fired. Uh, but I'm going to mention this now before I forget, because you guys know I will. Uh, so I had talked about the war taxes and how they had been changed here, that it's now two military power per month rather than a flat military cost, military power cost. Uh, and I said that it no longer was worth it. Uh, that's because I had a misunderstanding about uh, how much it cost. I thought it was 25 military power for two years, uh, in which case, obviously, this is a way more expensive route. Uh, but that is not the case. It was actually, and this is what somebody told me in the comments. Uh, again, I haven't played in a long time, so I, uh, it's not uh, surprising that I've forgotten. But I guess it was actually 50 uh, military power to raise war taxes for two years. So in which case, this would actually be cheaper. Uh, so this would be the cheaper way. So it is something to do if we have excess military power. Now, I don't feel like we do, though, because I really want to get this next tech here, the, the military tech five, so we can get the men on arms and all the other bonuses. So we're not going to spend it on that. I've, I don't really need money. We're okay for right now. So the Shadow Kingdom has fired. I've been talking about this uh, both of the, this episode and the last episode. Uh, and you can read this here if you want. But this is all about the Kingdom of Italy. Uh, so we get to kind of really see for the first time how these incidents work. Uh, so you get to vote. If you're a member of uh, the HRE, you get to vote on which option you want to do. And then uh, whatever one wins is the one they go with. Uh, so uh, in this case... 
They say it is time to abandon Italy. Austria will lose 10 prestige and 20 imperial authority, and any Italian nations within the HRE that have that have been reigned in will remain in the empire. Italian nations that have not been reigned in will leave. Uh, so I think those are the two provinces uh, that leave. I don't think it, it shows uh, what all uh, countries have been reigned in. I'm not really seeing seeing that at all. Uh, and then you have uh, we must reign in the Italians. The emperor has until the year 1490 to reign in as many Italian nations in the empire as possible. Uh, so not many people voting that voting for this one. I don't know if uh, it looks like Brandenburg uh, is voting for it. That's interesting. And then we have a couple Italian. Yeah, I'm, I mean we see Savoy there uh, voting for it. Uh, but most everybody's voting for this one. This one's going to win, and this is the one we want. Uh, we don't want to be in the HRE. Uh, we do get these nice bonuses here, but overall, I, I just don't want. I don't want the emperor telling me what to do, man. And we also have the thing that we can vote here. And it should go away once you've already voted, honestly. Uh, but you have till 1461 to vote, so maybe I, I, it's just going to be there until until that time period, I think. But yeah, I do expect we'll be leaving the HRE, and we'll lose those bonuses. Uh, overall, it'll be negative early on, uh, but I think it's a positive in the long run. So I want to get both of these. I don't know if we can get it right now. Uh, let's just take a look. We could do a separate peace treaty uh, if we have to as well to, to get control of Mantua. Uh, so, But let's just see if we can do it in... You know what? I don't know. Let me see how costly this is going to be on the... Uh, ooh. Oh, yeah, that is bad. I didn't realize just how bad that was going to be. Uh, would it be a little bit better to vassalize them? It would be, uh, but you still got the problem of uh, a possible coalition, which I'd like to avoid coalition. So we might not be able to take them. That's a real shame. But what we could do is force them to null their treaties uh, with the papal states so that we can attack them later. Uh, and I think that's what we'll end up end up doing here. Uh, we could also force them to end their alliance with Switzerland so we don't have to fight them. So yeah, we might end up doing that uh, because I just think uh, I just don't think it's going to be an option to. To get them both, uh, so let me just take a look and see how costly uh, this province is going to be. Remember, we we didn't spend a long time burning off our aggressive expansion, uh, so yeah, that's not a problem. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. So we could do that one. Yeah, definitely can't do both. <laughs> too many problems that would come out of that. Uh, so that's not an option, uh, and we can't again. We can't vassalize them either. So with that in mind, there's really no reason to, to continue this conflict any further. Because, uh, yeah, we're just not going to get anything because we the aggressive expansion is an issue. Uh, so let's do a severed peace treaty with these guys uh, where we force them to end all of their, their treaties that could cause us issues. Uh, and we, we can keep those rivalries. That's fine. Uh, they will be gone, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, and then we'll also force them to give us as much money as we can. Uh, maybe transfer trade power if we can. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So that's going to help out quite a bit. And I think that's it. Uh, maybe a little bit of money. It looks like they're willing to give us 50. Uh, so yeah, we'll do that. We're gonna take, uh, you know, obviously we'll take a little bit of inflation from this, but it's okay. Let's go and send that demand. This is only gonna end uh, the war with them. And you see that we took, uh, well, it looks like we took 6,300 casualties. They took 4,000. Okay, uh, so that's gonna generate a bit of money. And we'll just have to deal with them in the future. They're probably going to get new alliances, and it's probably going to be worse than it was before, which is kind of a shame, but again, aggressive expansion is an issue. Uh, we just didn't have a... We didn't bring them in uh, as a belligerent so that we could get that for cheaper. Uh, so I think we can go ahead and sue for peace, that we don't have any diplomats. There we go. Uh, and just try and get control of that. Again, it doesn't cause too much problems with the aggressive expansion. Uh, really just Mendua, uh, so not a problem at all. And then... There's nothing else to do since we're annexing them. We'll get take any money that we can. Uh, doesn't look like we can take anything. Huh. Oh, they're not even willing to do this. Okay. Um, so apparently, they're not willing to accept it. We just haven't uh, gotten war score up high enough. It is only at 32%. I suppose that makes sense. Uh, so we can attack here, I think, without any issues. They don't have a river here, so that's not a problem. Uh, so yeah, let's go and destroy these 9,000 men, and I think, well, I was going to say I think our ally will assist us, but they ran away. <laughs> he actually left. He got further, just in case. I didn't want to have anything to do with this. Uh, so we are going to have to invade into Florence. So there's really no way around this. And try and take out that, that army there. And then I suppose we can go... Well, it looks like he's going to try and go after 
the fort. I suppose we'll, we'll take out these provinces here, because uh, as long as the fort is, is being sieged down, he won't be able to take it back. And that will ensure... Oh, we can't go to this province. Can't we, like, go this way? No, there's no way to go there. Uh, so we have to go here to help out with the siege. Uh, but we just want to ensure they can't build any more troops. Uh, they'll still be able to build there. But again, there's not really a way for me to stop that because the fort's blocking it. I don't think it'll let me. No. Uh, so we just have to wait until the siege is done. Uh, and and we'll just wait until we can get peace. So we'll just keep on, like, popping in here. Oops. I am clicking on all the wrong buttons. Keep popping in here and seeing when it... Uh, becomes likely that they'll accept. Uh, it should slowly, yeah, we're at negative 74, so we're quite a ways away. Uh, so what do we want to do here? Uh, so this is an option because of the free thinker trait that our leader has. Uh, and so we'd only lose five admin power. You know, that's not bad at all. So yeah, we'll do that. It's like a month worth of admin power. Not too shabby. We do have the money to build something, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, we can do that. We're doing great on money. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and build something. Uh, we will build. Let's see here. Uh, do we want a church or do we want a marketplace? Well, we could go with the church. That would be point three. Would take a while to pay for itself. Uh, let's take a look at the marketplace. I feel like that might be better. Yeah, that might be better. But before we do anything, guys, uh, if we're going to do one of the... Um, Agendas here. We should do that now with some in the diet because sometimes they want you to build uh, Certain buildings and so we, we want to have the money for that. Uh, so let's go in some of the diets. Uh, let me just make sure It's nothing we have to worry about when it comes to influence. Everybody's influence is fairly low So let's go in some of the diets and see what agendas are available to us. So the clergy they want uh, What do they want a house of worship show a church in the capital? So this is what I was talking about. They did give us that uh, you know proposal to to build a church uh, this would give us uh, loyalty with the clergy when we succeed, and it would also give us one base tax, uh, which is going to be super helpful. Uh, the nobles want us to increase manpower. Uh, so they are they wanting... Oh, okay, and it's not in the capital. They want a base manpower of four here, and it's currently at two. Uh, so we'd have to increase it twice. So it's 100 something military power. And what do we get out of that? 10 loyalty and 505 manpower. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, the the burgers want the marketplace, and then we get one plus base production. Okay, um, so it's it's really a matter of whether we want uh, production or uh, base tax, I suppose, uh, and and which one we want the loyalty with. Uh, if we just look at these guys as as far as their current loyalty goes, uh, we're sitting at thirty eight percent for clergy and forty five percent for the burgers. Okay, I, I think we're gonna go with uh, uh, the burgers here because. I kind of want to build the, the marketplace. Yeah, that's what we'll go with. We'll take the one plus uh, base production. So let's do the proposal and let's go and get it started now. Uh, so I'm glad I waited. It kind of helped. Uh, I mean, we, either one of these buildings would have worked, uh, but we didn't know that at the time. Uh, so we're doing marketplace. All right, excellent. Just to try and increase our trade share in this region here where we currently have 13%, so not bad, uh, but yeah, not quite. As high as we'd like either. Obviously, we want to try and dominate that uh, trade uh, trade node if we can. Got 70% for the rebel faction. Uh, so uh, they might not rebel. Remember, that's ticking down. Uh, you know, the, the unrest should be ticking down because of the separatism. It's decaying by 0.5 per year. And so hopefully we'll be able to get this done here before the end of the episode. What we might want to do is just put it on speed 5 so we can get it done. Uh, since it's about that time, guys. Uh, and here we go, we have the Shadow Kingdom event. Uh, oh, and we finished up the siege. Uh, let's just turn this down just a little bit. Uh, and Mantua has embraced the Renaissance. And they did go with the as time to abandon Italy for the Shadow Kingdom, which is the event that just fired here. So while the Kingdom of Italy is still formerly part of the Holy Roman Empire, it has in many ways turned into a Shadow Kingdom, with the Italian states acting independently of the Emperor. The failure of successive empires, emperors to restore imperial authority in the region has also left large areas under the control of states that outright reject imperial authority. By now, the question for many Italian states is why they should allow a German emperor any authority over their lands. Exactly. Freedom for Italy. Uh, so our country is a natural part of the empire, uh, so we'll suffer penalties to prestige, unrest, and stability costs while it remains within the empire unless allied to the empire. Unless allied to the emperor, which we are. 
Uh, so we wouldn't get those penalties. We would lose 20 prestige. Or we could just say it does not concern us, which is exactly what we're gonna do. We are not gonna be in the Empire. I, I don't, I'm not trying to go that route, guys. Uh, if we get elected as the Emperor sometime, then, you know, that would change the situation, but I'm not trying to compete for that. I'm trying to conquer Italy. Um, I'd really like to form Italy, in fact, in this campaign. Uh, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get peace now. Uh, we could wait and then do a separate peace treaty with Florence so we could take some of their stuff and just wait for this battle to be over, or we can even go help out. If I can select my damn guy. Yeah, let's go help. Oh, I just lost my voice there for a little second. Uh, my bad. I get a little drink of water. So we're gonna get this done. Florence is asking for peace. I don't care what they they want to give me because I'm sure it's not the deal I want. Let's get this battle done, conquer the province, and then we'll make a separate peace treaty with them because I'm greedy, I'm very greedy. Everybody gives must give me good stuff. Uh, so we'll get this conquered, and that should only take a couple weeks here. And any moment, oh, we're on speed three. I was like, why the hell is this taking so damn long? Uh, so let's go ahead and do the separate peace treaty. We don't need to go through here. I don't know why I always do that. We can just do it through here. It's actually quicker doing it through here. Uh, you gotta select the right country, of course, but uh, let's see what we can get from them. Uh, so we could force them to release a country, which would decrease their power and would actually probably be a good thing. Uh, so we might do that. Let's see what else we might want to do. We can force them to end their rivalry with the Papal States. Uh, force them to end their alliances, so that would be good. Yeah, I kind of want to force them to end all these damn alliances here. You're not allowed to have any of those alliances, so says I. We could also force them to end their rivalry with the Papal States. It would be kind of expensive, meaning we're not going to get other stuff. Yeah, I don't see any reason to do that. We just don't want them to have the allies. Uh, so we'll, we'll do that. We'll even do this, force them to, to release uh, Pisa. And, and sorry again if I'm mispronouncing anything. And can we get anything else? We can do war repar reparation, so we'll do that. And that is all, folks. We'll see if we can get any money. <laughs> we can even get money. Nice. That's a lot of money. Uh, that's really going to increase our, our problems here with uh, inflation, but yeah. I mean, it's not too bad. All right, let's go and send the band. And wonderful. Uh, so, big chunk of money, though. We didn't get the money. Hmm. Okay. Did it all go to Luca? And did they get all the credit? They might have. Yeah, they might have gotten the credit. I don't know. Uh, let me just take a look and see how much that boosted us. 100 opinion with them. That is nice. Uh, would they be willing to ally us? No, because we're at war. Okay. So once we ended the war, they probably would be. Uh, so let's go and get our guy back over to here, since we know they're probably going to rebel. Uh, you know what? I'm not sitting there waiting for that. Uh, we'll go here and just yes train. Uh, because again, we are going to end the conflict now. It is over, although we cannot, because we don't have a diplomat. Uh, so we still cannot get control here. Why the hell is that? Uh, so who else is involved in this conflict? I thought it was just them. Oh, okay, the knights are still involved. I don't know what they're planning on doing here, but they are currently involved in another war right now. So I don't think they're coming over here. So we're just gonna have to wait for the ticket war score, I think. I don't think there's any other choice here. This rebellion might end up happening. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we'll go run over here real quick. And see if, uh, how much that impacts it. And then what we could do is just drill until it gets to 90%, though I know I'm going to miss it. And <laughs> they're going to attack me while I'm drilling. This is going to be disastrous. Uh, we'll just have to see. You know what? That would be stupid. You, we already know that's exactly what's going to happen, guys. So let's move over to here, and we'll just let them rebel, and then we'll attack them. Again, 8,000 men with the river penalty is better than fighting 12,000 men without the river penalty, in my opinion. Because uh, it's not like we're going to get any train bonuses uh, being on the defense there. So yeah, I'm surprised they won't accept our, our peace offer. I know this results in their own accusations. They're not super excited about it, but, uh, yeah. They're just not willing to do it. We're at negative five, though. Uh, negative four now, so it will be very soon. Uh, so we have completed the estate agenda, uh, which has gained us one plus base production here. So now we're sitting at 25 uh, current development. Remember, we need to get that up to 30 to complete that one mission. So we'll keep on doing those agendas uh, if we can. Uh, I would really like to do the next one, which would get us the, the base tax uh, for building... Uh, the church, but we don't have any money, so can't really do that. So I will just keep on training up here and just wait till they accept it. it. Should be now. 
Negative two. Okay, it's going a bit slower than I thought. Again, just gotta wait for that ticking war score to go up. And uh, that's where I want to end this episode, is with uh, another win, another victory. Uh, we do have a ton of spy network here, uh, so we could definitely do this next if we wanted to. Uh, attack them, and then of course we gotta do it in Naples. However, let's just take a look and see if anybody's willing to support this. No, nobody's willing to accept this at all. Oh, probably because we'd be pulling them into the war here. We'll have to take a look after we end and see if anybody's willing to accept. Okay, so those are all expired, which were impact and influence. Uh, so let's take a look and see if they, they will accept our peace treaty. And, and there's another way we could be doing this as well. We could be going straight through here. That's another. Uh, that's a less clicks than what I was doing. Uh, they are willing to accept it. Uh, I doubt we'll be able to get anything from them. We can get one gold. It's not even worth it. <laughs> Let them keep the gold, even though they're going to be gone. Uh, let's go and send the demand. And you can see the total casualties. We have 15,000. They have 25,000. Uh, so we have annexed them and expanded our territory. And what we're going to do is get this cord. I'm going to have to use that admin power to do that. And then take a look at... Oh, we have to wait till we get our diplomat back. And see if anybody's willing to support this conflict. Nobody is. Okay. Well, that's... It's unfortunate. Uh, we have a truce, so they wouldn't be able to... I don't think they would be able to come in. They might be able to come in, though. Yeah, that's... That's weird. Is it because they joined... I think it's because they joined their trade league. I think that's what's going on. Uh, these trade leagues, man. One reason to get rid of them. All right, guys, so that's going to be the end of this second episode. I'm enjoying it so far. I hope you guys are as well. If you are, make sure you leave a like on that video, on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all comments. Love talking to you guys. I uh, appreciate any feedback. Uh, so I'll see you guys on the next episode, which I'm hoping to have an episode on Monday. We'll see. Uh, it might be a bit late on Monday. Uh, I don't know. We'll see if I can get one recorded or not because this is a uh, new series, obviously. So I typically don't put videos out on Mondays. Uh, so if we did have a video on Monday, it would be the last video on Monday, uh, which that reminds me we need to cancel that fort. I don't know why that reminded me of that. Uh, but yeah, it would be the last uh, Monday video that we had for the series. Uh, because I do work all day and all night on Sunday, so that's why we don't usually have Monday videos. But I'm going to try, guys. I'll try to have a Monday video. If we don't have one on Monday, or if you do have one, it'll be late. And if we don't have one, then it'll be, uh, next episode will be on Tuesday. Which is actually the day that Emperor releases and the new patch uh, will be available to everybody. Uh, so I hope you guys uh, you know enjoy the game as much as I've been liking it so far. Uh, so yeah, we're going to leave off here. I will see you guys in the next episode. And thanks for watching.